What's going on my Jack brother? Coach Scott here. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing a complete back workout to get jacked. This is the exact back workout that I'm currently following myself. We're gonna be blasting the lats, the traps, the rear delts, all the upper back muscles, the teres major, the teres minor, the rhomboids, the infraspinatus. The only thing we're not gonna be working is the lower back because next up in my training split is legs. I'll either be handing it tomorrow if I decide to take a day off. It'll be the following day and I just don't like my lower back to feel any kind of fatigue at all when I'm training legs. So my current split, Workout number one is chest with a bit of shoulders in there. The shoulders were focused on the anterior delts and the lateral aspect of the delts. Uh, the anterior delts get worked a lot so with a lot of the pressing movements there. Workout number two is back and rear delts. The rear delts get worked a lot with a lot of the back exercises there. Uh, workout number three is legs. We absolutely freaking blast those hamstrings and the quads. Workout number four is arm day. We're going full bro with that. So as you can see, it's a four day body part split routine that I'm currently following. I'm training five days per week. So each muscle group gets worked once every four to six days. Other than the arms, the triceps get worked as a secondary muscle group on chest day. The biceps get worked as a secondary muscle group on back day. And then they get to be worked as a primary muscle group in their own individual workout on arm day. Now let's get to the back workout. For the most part, I prefer to begin my workouts with an isolation exercise in the 12 to 15 rep range. I just find it's easier on my joints, it primes my muscles for the bigger lifts, and enhances my mind-muscle connection. This has been shown in EMG studies in the past. Brett Contreras has done some great ones, especially with advanced lifters, showing that we're really able to steer that neural drive to certain aspects of a muscle group. Now, there was a recent research paper that was published that showed if you uh, begin with an isolation exercise, it actually kind of diminished the EMG response, the muscle activity of that muscle group and diminish the strength um, with the bigger lifts afterwards that you may experience yourself. That is definitely not something that I have personally ever experienced if I begin with an isolation exercise versus doing multiple workup sets with a bigger compound lift at the beginning of the workout. I don't notice a difference in strength with that compound lift. So oftentimes with my back workouts, I'll begin with a straight arm pull down, but in this particular workout, we are going with the old school pullover machine. I freaking love the feel of this machine always focused on driving through the elbows. So my hands are not doing any work here whatsoever. There's sometimes where I'll, I'll just take my hands off that bar uh, altogether and just focus on driving through the elbows. And in that bottom range of the motion, holy crap, can you ever feel the lats contract here? So getting an incredible stretch at the top, but the contraction in the bottom is where it's at with this exercise. It's something that you cannot mimic with like a dumbbell pullover that uh, I often see people do on back day. With the dumbbell pullover, you're going to feel that stretch portion, but once you get that dumbbell up like close to above your head, like that's where everything kind of starts to relax. It's almost like you're losing all tension in the muscle group. Whereas here, you're able to drive those elbows all the way down to your, your hips there, to your waist, and the contraction in your lats is absolutely freaking ridiculous. And again, I find that getting that contraction, like driving through the elbows at the bottom, enhances that mind-muscle connection, really carries over to the next exercise. So here, three sets, 12 to 15 repetitions, resting for about two minutes between sets. Next, we're moving on to the neutral grip pull down. Now, in the past, I used to use a much closer grip with the typical V bar that you'll find in most gyms, uh, but I found it kind of limited my range of motions, not as comfortable on the shoulders, so I've been gravitating more towards uh, some wider grips, uh, using a grip that's just a little bit inside of the shoulders. Uh, I've used like hammer strength machines where it may start a little bit narrow at the top and then gets a little bit wider at the bottom. I freaking love that. Uh, but my favorite is definitely this grip right here, where it's about shoulder width apart. I just find it really engages my, my lats, my upper back muscles easier on the shoulders. I just find I can drive through my elbows a lot better and um, get a fuller range of motion, like really driving those elbows down to the sides there. Now this is an exercise where I see a lot of mental masturbation and pissing matches among coaches out there. Some arguing that EMG studies show that a wider grip with your palms facing forward is best for activating the lats. Others will say that's not lats at all. Uh, that's just upper back. Uh, the direction of the muscle fibers show that you need to have a neutral grip, shoulder width apart, no arch in your, your back at all. You gotta be a little bit more upright, maybe even angling your body position a little bit more forward not driving all the way down through your hips, keeping your elbows in front of you. Um, I'm just telling you, I don't get, I could care less about those debates. You're never gonna see me get involved in that. I'm just in the gym, shut up and lift, get it done. I know that throughout the year, I'm gonna be varying my grips. I'm gonna be varying my body positioning. And because of all of that, I'm gonna be hitting all the different muscle fibers. Everything is going to get stimulated throughout the year. So I don't get wrapped up in all of the minutia there. 
I'm just gonna train and have freaking fun. So with this exercise, we're aiming for eight to 12 repetitions, three sets, resting for about two minutes between sets. So that completes the vertical pulling movements of this workout. Now it's time to move on to the horizontal pulling movements, beginning with the cable seated row. Again, this was an exercise where I used to use that really close V grip and I found it limited my range of motion, it was a little tough on the wrist in that fully contracted position. So now I typically go with a handle grip that is just inside the shoulder. Sometimes I'll use that exact same bar that I used during the uh, new grip pull downs there so it's a little bit wider than than my shoulder width or about shoulder width apart I love the feel of that with this exercise I'm really focused on driving through my elbows and I really love to get playful with this movement sometimes I'll focus on driving my elbows down towards my hips sometimes a little bit more towards the mid back sometimes up a little bit higher sometimes I will try to flare my elbows out a little bit I'm just really getting playful with it and seeing how these subtle little changes impact where I'm feeling the exercise that's a beauty of physique training guys it's just limitless. It's just having that heightened sense of awareness and trying different things and just seeing how your body responds to it. Now, you can also play around with having an arch in your lower back or keeping your body a little bit more upright. You can also keep your body rigid in place, no movement at the, the lower back, the hips whatsoever. Or you can really focus on exaggerating the stretch, really fully stretching out those lats in the beginning, whether you're just rounding your back forward or even getting a little bit of a lean um, for it. So you're actually using the lower back and using some momentum to pull that weight back. Guys, there's no freaking right or wrong here. Play around with it. Experiment from month to month. Do little subtle changes here and there and see what feels best to you. Maybe they all feel great so you can work them all in from time to time. Don't get caught up into these stinking debates out there about what's right and what's wrong and just overthinking the whole process. Guys, we're in here to have fun. If it feels good to you, you feel the muscles working, you're enjoying your training sessions, guys, that's freaking rocks. So with this exercise, we're aiming for eight to 12 repetitions, three sets, again, resting for about two minutes between sets. Next, we're moving on to the dumbbell row, another movement that I love to get playful with. Sometimes I'll drive my elbows towards the hips, sometimes in the midline, sometimes up a little bit higher. Where you drive that elbow will have an impact on the muscle fibers that are being stimulated. Towards the hips are gonna work a little bit more lats. Up high is gonna work more of the upper back muscles. There is no right or wrong, which is why I get a kick out of the keyboard jockeys who will write comments to me, dude, you're supposed to drive towards your hips. Didn't you know that? I'm like, it depends what you're trying to work there. So again, just get playful with it. Go with what feels right for you and change it up from time to time. Mix where you're driving that elbow towards. Now with the dumbbell row, I like to rest between arms. How long? Um, how long would my rest period, like I've been saying, like two minutes is has been like a general guideline, but I just go when I'm ready, when I know I can give my best to that set. I don't want to go too early and I don't want to wait too long. If I'm feeling recovered enough, I'm ready to get at it. So um, the rest periods are just a suggestion here. Once again, we're going for eight to 12 repetitions and approximately resting. I'd say for, for the dumbbell row, it's more like 60 to 90 seconds between arms that usually works good for me. I don't need to rest two minutes between arms each time, although sometimes it is the case. So that completes the horizontal pulley movements. It is time to move on to the traps. We're gonna do some shrugs here. You can either use dumbbells, a barbell, a trap bar. Uh, I freaking love this hammer strength machine. It's just super comfortable. It's super smooth. I just get a great focused contraction here. It starts out a little bit wider, comes in a little bit more narrow at the top there with the grip. Um, it just feels right to me. Now, like many other guys, I used to do traps on shoulder day. Why? I don't know. I think it's what we used to see in the magazines at times there, but your traps make up a good portion of your back. So it just makes sense to train them on back day. So here with the shrugs, we're aiming for eight to 12 repetitions. Again, resting for approximately two minutes between sets. Um, I highly recommend that you incorporate a variety of different shrugging movements in your program. Uh, this one here is working a lot of the mid traps here, but I like a lot of different variations of the prone shrug. We're using dumbbells on some sort of incline bench, or even like a scapular retraction where you're using the seated row machine and just focusing on squeezing your shoulder blades together. You're keeping your arms locked. Your elbows are locked in place. So no arm movement at all. It's just everything is going through the scapula, just squeezing the shoulder blades together. That can work if you're keeping your, your shoulders up higher a little bit more, work a bit more of the upper trap. So it's just, you want to make sure that you're fully developing the traps. And of course the traps are going to get involved in a lot of different like pull down uh, movements as well. So, but it is great to, to kind of isolate them with some different shrugging 
uh, movements here. Next, we're gonna hit the rear delts directly with the rear delt cable fly. They've been worked indirectly with all the other back exercises. And having just done the shrugs, you're definitely gonna feel the traps involved in this movement, which they should be. I just want you to enhance your mind muscle connection with the rear delts to make sure that they're doing most of the work. Notice that we are moving from a high to low angle here, and I really want you to focus on driving through the elbows. Your arms can have a slight bend there, but I don't want you like pulling through the hands. I want you to really focus on driving through the elbows and notice that the elbows end up probably about 30 degrees away from your body. We're aiming for 12 to 15 repetitions here and resting for about 90 seconds to two minutes between sets. And that completes the back workout. Now with this current training plan, after every workout, I've been performing one calf exercise and one ab exercise. So high frequency, three sets each time, all out freaking effort. With this workout, I'm doing the standing calf raise. Notice how I hold the stretch in the bottom briefly and also hold the contraction at the top briefly. You wanna take momentum out of this exercise. The Achilles tendon is is very elastic. So you want to try to eliminate its involvement if the, in this exercise as much as possible, really steer that tension towards the, the calves. Now I am team stubborn calves here. It doesn't matter what kind of frequency I'm doing, uh, how much I'm punishing them, the amount of effort I put into them, the different exercise I utilize. I've used utilized blood flow restriction training, done everything they can. It's just, this is the most stubborn muscle group that I have to build. I wish they grew like my arms did, but uh, it is what it is. Just working with my genetics, just putting in the best focus effort I possibly can. It's all I can ever ask for. With the abs, I did the Russian twist here, one of my favorite movements. Now, I freaking love, like with the dumbbell row, you definitely feel the core getting engaged. Uh, and this is a nice little carryover doing the Russian twist here, really uh, getting the obliques involved. You still feel the abdominals doing a lot of the work there. Just love the overall tension, the overall mobility with this movement. I've got a healthy spine, so uh, no concerns here. So just a great way to wrap up this workout. Again, three sets. Here I go for high repetitions, usually around 20 repetitions for this uh, for this exercise. Absolutely freaking phenomenal workout. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. I'd really, really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. If you know fellow bro who would benefit from watching today's video, please do me a favor and share it with them. More than anything, I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section below. Share your thoughts, share your insights on this workout plan, on my training split, what you're currently following along as well. I love to hear what's going on in your experiences and how you are building your best physique while living your life to the fullest. Before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Jacked After 40. Have yourself an amazing day. Catch you in the next video.